Sometimes for a football coach, they're just born to be coordinators. They want to be in the trenches, coaching the players on the field and not a CEO. They are football coaches and therefore the coordinator stop is the best one for them. For some head football coaches, the group of five is a good place to be. It's still a big operation, but it's not the bright lights in the big stage and they just can't succeed at the power five level. For some, it's just a bad fit. Bad fit with a football program, the administration, the institution, the culture, the part of the country, whatever it might be, just not a good fit. Any of these or all of them might be the case with Jeff Collins to Georgia Tech, but flat out he is not getting the job done in Atlanta. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We discuss, we debate, we analyze the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis because of your contribution and your support right here at the Voice of College Football. Join us each and every day. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live. That's the reason you subscribe and hit that bell. All right, Jeff Collins is out according to first reported by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Collins out, and also the guy that hired him. This is typically the way it works. Todd Stansberry, who brought in Jeff Collins, and no hire uh, defines an athletic director like the football hire. And Jeff Collins, wow, this has been a disaster from the beginning, from game two and losing to the Citadel. Jeff Collins is 20, uh, 10 and 28, 7 and 19 in the ACC. He's lost nine consecutive games. They just lost to UCF 27 to 10 this past game. They lost a game this year to Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a good football team, a good football team, a decent football team, a top 25 football team, 42 nothing. Who gets shut out in this day and age? It can't happen. They finished out 2021 Georgia Tech losing to Georgia and Notre Dame. No shame in that. But 100 to nothing. 55 zip, 45 zip. Had Georgia Tech and Todd Stansberry made the move to release Jeff Collins and fire him right then, they would have had a $7.2 million buyout. For the embarrassment of four other ugly football games, Stansberry, this is probably another reason why he's losing his job, is costing the university another four plus million dollars because the buyout right now is 11.3 million dollars it would have been 7.2 in january it would have been 10.6 so much like the decisions made at nebraska and at arizona state the thought is we got to get this over and out of the way and we need to prove to recruits and our fan base our alumni our boosters that we care about football we're serious about football and even though it's going to cost us another $700,000, $700,000, Jeff Collins needs to go, needs to go right now. Again, it was just not a fit from the beginning. So yes, he was given a bit more of a honeymoon period than a lot of coaches in the eyes of fans and media because of the transition that would have to be in the roster. Paul Johnson, successful stay at Georgia Tech, but of course he ran that triple option, outdated, archaic offense but that it was successful to a certain extent they were always going seven and five eight and four and going to bowl games at least uh but it just didn't seem like it would attract of course top line players to the offense skill position players and quarterbacks in particular so you bring in uh, a jeff collins who's going to run an updated offense and there is an understanding that on the offensive side of the ball there needs to be a transition there's no excuses for the bad defense Uh, because they had a good defense at Georgia Tech prior to Jeff Collins, and it's been abysmal ever since. So my goodness, these are the kind of historic landmark losses we mentioned in his second game, 2019. They lose to the Citadel. They lost to Ole Miss this year, 42-0. Northern Illinois was another loss uh, as a non-Power 5 loss in 2021. And then also in that first year, uh, Jeff Collins and company lost to Temple, That was where he came from. That got him the job at Georgia Tech, but he loses to Temple. Not just loses to Temple, they lose 24-2. Yeah, we mentioned the roster turnover. So you turn over the roster through the transfer portal, which they did have one top 20 finish in the transfer portal under Jeff Collins. But otherwise, the recruiting rankings have not been 
positively influenced by the transfer portal, and you would have thought that that would have been the route to go to bring in experienced players. But even the recruiting rankings themselves have been pretty abysmal, except for one season. His recruiting rankings at Georgia Tech, numbers 50, 27, 47, and 55 in the nation right now. Jeff Collins was working on the 51st rated class in the country, according to 247 Sports, with 16 hard commits. And we mentioned the one big con of having Paul Johnson as head coach, but let's understand Paul Johnson won at Georgia Tech. Again, typically 7-5, and 8-4 and four range, 82-61. and 61. Yes, he didn't have a sterling elite program there. They would have their 5-7, and 4-8 and eight seasons on occasion, but typically going to bowl games, and they even hit some ceilings there at Georgia Tech. Paul Johnson made it to four ACC championship games, won the conference title in 2009, which just seems completely unthinkable at this point, finished in the top 10 three times, and went to the Orange Bowl twice, finished in the top 25 three times, during his tenure, which ran, let's see, 2008 through 18, 11 season, three times in the top 25. His final top 25 finish in 2014. They won the Orange Bowl, finished number seven in the country at Georgia Tech. So you can win at Georgia Tech. We've seen a long line of coaches going back to Bobby Ross and others win at Georgia Tech. It can be done. You're in a hotbed of recruiting in Atlanta. Yes, the academic standards are high. Uh, how much the institution actually holds the football program and the football coach to those standards, we don't know. I'm going to guess that they're compromised to a certain extent, but it's probably more difficult for a football player to enroll at Georgia Tech than in a lot of other schools. But still, they're in Atlanta. So interim head coach Brent Key, who was an assistant coach and offensive line coach, is given the eight-game audition to try to get the job. Other candidates we've gathered up, and these are pretty obvious. These are the same guys that come to mind. Uh, Jamie Chadwell's been that next guy in line for a lot of jobs. Uh, Coastal Carolina, they're 3-0 and against uh, 4-0, and I believe, again this season. Uh, he's done a tremendous job at Coastal Carolina, of course, and any job, especially in the South, He's brought up Dan Mullen. <laughs> Dan Mullen uh, is in a sense, a safe pick from a football standpoint, because we know he can run a program and win. He did it at Florida, regardless of what we think about his antics. He won at Florida. He won at Mississippi state more so than uh, the coaches before and after him. We'll see about Mike Leach, but Dan Mullen brings a lot of baggage, a lot of, quirkiness, awkwardness, what what he did, and it's been well documented all over the place, and especially here, uh, we've outlined it, so I won't discuss it right now. There are some cons to the Dan Mullen equation. Also, Lance Leopold, of course, wasn't talked about concerning any Power 5 jobs outside of Kansas, of course. That's where he's head coaching right now until this remarkable run by the Jayhawks in recent weeks. They are 4-0. They just beat Duke, which Duke's not great, but 3-0 and coming in. And, of course, they've got the wins against West Virginia and against Houston by three scores. So Lance Leopold has put himself on near the top of lists for Power 5 jobs. And then the one wild card. So those are the three that were pretty easy for me to come up with off the top of my head. But in searching the Internet, this one hit me in the face. I would not have thought of this, but there is a wild card fashion. Factor, of course, with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders may be able to go toe-to-toe in recruiting with Kirby Smart to a certain extent. Not go toe-to-toe and win, I mean, overall, every five-star, every high four-star. I'm talking about, on occasion, he may be the guy that turns the recruiting in their favor concerning certain players. We've already seen it with two of the top ten players in the nation at Jackson State. Deion Sanders. So the big plus is for Georgia Tech. There's great history there, great tradition. They are a prime candidate for either the SEC or the Big Ten to scoop up. Uh, it's a great academic institution. It is in the heart of NFL Player Factory there in Atlanta, like Houston, like the DMV. 
they produce more NFL players than anywhere in the country. The downside, the recent situation, them not being looked upon across the nation by football players as a football power, a football brand that anyone wants to play for, and therefore they've not been able to lure uh, the top players in the country by any stretch. They have not been in the running by any sense of the imagination. Leave your comments down below concerning the firing of Jeff Collins. It seems to be a no-brainer. He had to go. Uh, they just could have done it uh, before they lost another four football games and $4 million. Your thoughts down below, your comments, your candidates for the next Georgia Tech head coaching spot right here at the Voice of College Football.